caught one. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. I'm here at camp, but I'm just checking the fishing synopsis or regulations here about un unlawful fishing methods. Um, you're not allowed to use a light. You're not allowed to fish with nets, including dip nets. You're not allowed to snag fish. Different things, I'm, I'm going through this whole list of, of fishing methods you're not allowed to use in BC here and uh, what I'm you know like I was going back or thinking back to uh, when I did the RC fishing with the boat and uh, the conservation officers they they couldn't do anything about that or had nothing to say about that because there's nothing that says you can't use an RC boat as a fishing method so the other thing it doesn't mention is fishing with my drone. My little Mini 3 Pro. And um, now it's not very powerful, but what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is do a catch and cook, catch the fish with the drone, dispatch it, and fly it to the fire pit. And I think you'll find this really interesting. So I'm going to a spot where Zach and I started the 30 day survival challenge and you remember the fish were just tiny and I think that this drone can actually catch and lift these fish out of the lake. I'm allowed five, not that I need five, but uh, basically I think the drone can handle these uh, six to eight inch fish and uh, we'll have success with this idea. I love these kind of new ideas and uh, there's no mention in the regs that you can't use a drone so I don't see an issue with it and uh, I think you'll find this interesting. I don't want to catch a big fish and then all of a sudden it swamps my two thousand dollar drone. That'd be a tragedy. Then I'd have to fight with it and put the drone up and down and maybe try to drag it to shore. But I think we're gonna have success with this idea and I think you'll really enjoy it. What are you doing Finn? Is it too hot for you? So it's fairly calm right now. Um, this is perfect. I'm just going to try to attach my line to about the center of the drone. Got a little bit of tape to hold it in place. A couple of these flies. Well, they're not flies. Why did I say flies? A couple of little hooks with the red on the end and some four pound test. We'll get this rigged up. And see if we can't get one. Bet you we do. I'm only using four pound as I said. But uh, boy I hope we don't catch something so big it uh, swamps this thing. Without covering the sensors. Just wind my line around the drone for now. Just got to find a worm. You can usually find something along the shore. There's one already. But no, I'm not seeing any. There's one. There's another one. They're not very big, but they're small fish anyway. Okay, well, we'll make it do. Got three little guys. Some of you might be thinking, well, how am I going to know when I get a bite? I can see the fish, so when I'm getting a bite, I'm just going to take the remote when I see it biting and push up quick and hopefully it sets the hook. It's nice and calm now, so I think if I point the drone down, you might even see the fish biting because it's only 10 feet away, so that would be cool. I saw one fish, but I don't see a pile. All right.
like I say, I approximately 10 feet of line because I'm thinking, you know, I don't want these fish to think that this is an osprey or a hawk or something coming to get them. Um, otherwise, I'll just have to put more line on so they don't see the drone, I guess. I don't know if you can see, but there's a fish right there. Bait the hook up. Now, hopefully I don't get tangled as I try to take off. Let's get this in the air. It's a very awkward spot too because it's slippery ground. I'm looking for fish, but uh, now there's enough of a breeze I can't really see. See if we can see the drone. I'm close to shore, but I want to be able to see the fish, so. We're just waiting for a fish now. I don't see any right now. Okay, we got a fish biting at this thing. There he is. There's another one coming. I don't know if we can see it on this camera. I know you can't see it, but we got fish biting. I think I got one. Oh, I had him, but he got off. Okay, well, believe it or not, Gusts of wind just pushed it right into the lake. Now I can't finish the video till I buy a new $2,000 drone. These videos are starting to get costly, I can tell you. But yeah, how disappointing. I had some footage on there. But we'll start over, get another drone, go to the city, a couple of days, try to finish this video. Right on. See, there's no point getting upset. I think I probably bypassed the, uh, I don't know, I hit, I hit something and it said bypass. I think I probably messed up with the controller and disabled the sensors because there was no reason for it to crash. It just got pushed a little bit and it just went right down, hit the lake, flipped around and sunk out of sight. <laughs> hey, you gotta laugh with me. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I figured out exactly what happened. There's two ways that uh, this could have happened, but I was trying to get video with this camera and run the drone, and I was going up and down with the, the drone, like trying to bounce the, the uh, hook in the water. And then I hit the controller down position, and it just hit the water because I did have this on bypass mode. It should have been on brake mode, and then the sensors work. Uh, the other way that it could happen too is if I had this in sport mode, this button here in the middle. But it wasn't on sport mode, it was on uh, the N, but I had it on bypass mode instead of brake mode. So anyway, Joe to the rescue again. He's uh, going to show up today, he's uh, on his way mushroom picking again. And I asked him to pick up a drone, which he did, and I got to pick up that later and then 
get back to the lake and finish this uh, drone catch and cook. Right on. Joe stopped by, gave me my new drone. It took me a while to figure out how to get the remote to recognize the new drone. So now I'm ready to get back up there and try to do a catch and cook with the drone. This is a cool idea, you know. Leave the moose alone. It's a young cow moose on our way to the lake. Just got to bait my hook again. Oh, hit a rock already. Amazing. What keeps going wrong for me? Let's go fishing. Now we'll just wait and hope uh, one comes by. Hopefully they're not afraid of the drone, like I said. I got one. I got one. And he's hooked pretty good. Well, I don't want to crash my drone again. There we go. Then I'll fly him over to the camp. I'll dispatch him and fly him over there. Comes my fish. And here the drone. Flew it here. It worked. Perfect. Right on. You see these little brookies have got this uh, pink meat, these little guys. Some of them have white meat in the rivers and creeks, but uh, these ones out of that lake, this guy's about a little over seven inches long, maybe seven and a half. But that's about as big a fish as I would want to catch with the drone. But we'll do our catch and cook here. Drone catch and cook. Fish is done. They're very tasty fish. I don't even need salt with these, they're just so good. A bit of butter in the pan and that's it. Mm. So tasty, it's just too bad they're not bigger. But like I say, a bigger fish, I would have had two swamp drones instead of one.
So anyway, uh, you know, I could have cooked this on a fire up at the lake, but just the other day, while I was waiting for the second drone, a fire ban came on. So now I am have to resolve to cooking on uh, the Coleman stove or briquettes. But something I was thinking about, you know, I, I know for a fact that there's a lot of people that have caught a lot more fish than I have. But I kind of think I might have the record, leave a comment, I might have the record for the most methods of catching fish. I mean, you know, this is a, the drone catch and cook, there was the RC boat, the DeWalt drill, all the different fish traps that I've done over the past few years on the channel. I just wonder if anybody's caught uh, as many fish with as many ways of fishing, types, methods. Leave a comment if, uh, I, if you think I hold the record. Wanted to show you something though. I know you find things interesting. I know some of you uh, gun connoisseurs will appreciate this. I have a rifle that's my pride and joy. I gotta show you. I figured I'll just throw this into this video. I've got a very, very rare 30-30 that I picked up at a gun show. This is a 1900 model 1894. Turn of the century. This, this gun was made before John Wayne was even born. It's a 123 year old gun. I had to, I bought it at a gun show and I had to uh, have it fixed because the firing pin was broken. The mechanism that loads the shell, the springs were broken. So it wouldn't load the shell, it wouldn't shoot. But I got it back and, uh, it, <coughs> excuse me, it works like a charm. So, you gun connoisseurs, there's a collector of a lifetime. I waited my whole life to get one this old. It's all marked up. The bluings all wore off it. But any of the, the gunsmiths, the gunsmith that fixed it, all the people at the gun show said, do not re-blue it. Do not sand the marks out. This is history. 123 years of history with this gun. So I thought some of you might appreciate that. So I'm sure some of you want to see this 1930-30 work. I haven't shot it since uh, I got it back from the gunsmith. I got a coffee cup full of water over there and uh, I want to shoot it too. There we go. Nice. Yeah, so I fell in love with the uh, old 3030s back in the days John Wayne was my hero in movies like True Grit and uh, just such a classic. Not the most powerful rifle, but probably one of the most classic of all time. So, yeah, John Wayne was my hero. I used to just watch all his movies. And I can imitate him a bit and see if it works. I aim to take you into Fort Smith, Ned, and see you hang, or I shoot you now. What'll it be? Right on, but I want to thank you all for watching. Um, I like these kind of interesting videos to do. I always like uh, trying to bring you interesting things and ideas, and uh, there's going to be lots more to come. Thank you subscribers, thank you viewers in general, and we'll see you on the next one.